Thank you, Lord. Compromise. Amen. So the story goes. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Sin's destructive power. Wow. You know, uh, we as Christians, we kind of got a handle on this. Because we've experienced uh, the fact of this matter that sin is very destructive. In our past, we got involved in sin and we ended up suffering the consequences to that sin. And it kind of burned a print in our mind to recognize that it's bad, you know. Uh, but this world, you know, doesn't quite get it, you know. They think that sin is okay. And we're even getting to a point where sin is being legislated to be promoted, you know, and protected, you know. So we're, we're in a, a troublesome situation as a society. And we need to be armed and ready to promote this, uh, this idea and let people know that it's sin that is destructive. And we have to be ready, not just for our own sake. I mean, we can recognize in this sermon today that, you know, we're being warned and not to get involved in sin and don't fall for the temptation. Uh, but this world is falling for it. And the great deception is very active right now. Uh, Jesus told us, do not be deceived. Well, deception is working. The tempter is out doing his business and he is... He's doing a bad job, but he's good at doing that bad job. And he is promoting sin in so many different areas. So we need to be able to stand strong and, and take this ammunition that God has given us today so that we can be armed to, to uh, affect the ne negative impact that the enemy is trying to put on people. We are that buffer that God has put on this planet. We are the army of the Lord that are present here to confront this evil. And that's what it is. It is evil. And he uses that temptation to get people to a place of sin so he can come in for the kill, steal, and destroy. So it's so important to uh, receive this today and be armed. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me to James chapter 1 and verse 13. James chapter 1, verse 13. He says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is, is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Verse 16, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. The deception is so great right now. And we know that the deception comes from the deceiver. And that is the devil. He is the source, the, the starting point of all deception. Now, I want to get this out of the way first, though. We need to recognize this is a fact. That the devil is not all-knowing. The devil cannot read your thoughts. No. The devil is not everywhere present. He can't do it. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't have the ability to just zoom everywhere. He's, he is a created being. We are created beings. There are limitations imposed on the angelic realm. Okay? They have to travel from here to there. They cannot just appear and disappear. They have to travel. And the, the Bible shows us examples of how they traveled to different places. Uh, so he is very limited. And he is not all powerful. Matter of fact, he has no power whatsoever. He is very limited in his capacity. And a matter of fact, the only reason he's allowed to exist is to, uh, to be a tool used in the hand of God to tempt people. Now, temptation means testing. That's what he's here for. He has this idea in his head. I know he thinks he's going to rule and reign. He thinks he's going to take over the kingdom of God. It ain't going to happen. That's not what... He doesn't have that capacity. The only thing he has is his lies. That's all he has. And he uses his lies to tempt people to try to destroy us because he hates us. Think about it. He's got all those limitations imposed upon him. He cannot affect God. There's no way. He can't go into heaven and throw his uh, 
three-pronged spear at God and kill him? <laughs> he doesn't have that. He can't even get close to that. You know, he's limited. So what does he do? He uses all of what he does have as deceptions and lies and tricks, temptation, to get at us. That's the only way he can even affect God, by hurting us. Can you imagine? When we're in, in a bad spot, and we're being tempted, and we're being enticed, and we're, we're about to fall into sin, and maybe we do fall into sin, and sin, when, it, when it's full drawn, becomes death, can you imagine how bad that makes God feel? Well, the enemy is good at doing that. That's the only avenue he has towards God. So he is very limited. So when we're talking about him and his temptations, we have to look at it from a perspective that he's using trickery and deception to try to get us into a place to get involved in sin. That's his way. That's his method of operation. That's all he has. He cannot possess any one of us. He can't do it. We are already possessed. We are possessed by the Spirit of Almighty God. God's nature is in us. There is no room for the devil in us. So all he can do is from the outside throw little poisonous darts of doubts and fears and lies and deceptions. That's all he can do. But we as Christians, we know how to fight against that. All we have to do is raise up the shield of faith. And that way those darts cannot penetrate. Our faith in God, our trust in God, will keep Him from attacking us and having an impact in our lives. The problem we Christians have is every once in a while we pull down that shield and bam, we get it in the eye. <laughs> no, we've got to keep that shield up. We cannot compromise. When you're in a, in a war zone, you have to be on alert all the time. There is no time for uh, playing games and stuff, you know. And you sure don't want to go and lay your shield down somewhere where you don't have quick access to it. You have to be ready. When, when I was in the military, I always had this, like, it was a fear. I had this fear because uh, we were issued an M16. And we were, I mean, we were told and told time, you take care of that thing, you guard it with your life. You do not leave its presence. It, where you go, it goes, you know. And so uh, we had that all the time, and I was always under this little bit of fear that I might misplace it or something, you know, forget it somewhere, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I took very good care of my M16. When I went to the bathroom, it went to the bathroom, you know. So <laughs> I always took care of it, you know. And, and that's kind of the way it is here in the kingdom of God. We have to take care of our shield. We need to have it ready so that the enemy doesn't have an impact in our lives. Because he is going to constantly be trying. And he's going to use every avenue available to him. And the one thing that he, he does have, he, he has some knowledge. Because see, here we've been here, I've been here in this world 62 years. You know, and you've been here however old you are. And you've been, so you've been learning some stuff, right? And from 20 years ago to now, has your skill level increased? Has your knowledge increased? Has your wisdom increased? Yes. <laughs> Why? Because we've been learning stuff. Guess what? The devil's been around a long time. <laughs> when he was cast down to this earth, he's been here ever since then. And he's been uh, studying people and how people are and what their reactions are. And he knows our strengths and our weaknesses. So he is armed in that respect to attack us with temptations. That's all he's got, the temptation. So he's going to try to get us into spots where he can use temptation, which is a lie. It's a lie. Whatever sin that the enemy is trying to get us to fall for, it is a lie. It ain't going to work. Whatever, whatever thing he's trying to get into us to, to cause some division or heartache or pain, it is not going to work because we belong to God. We're going to repent somewhere down the line and we're going to be rid of that thing, you know. But he's going to try it anyway. He's going to try to knock us down. 
Because if he can knock you down, your testimony suffers. And if your testimony suffers, your impact to this lost and dying world suffers. So see what he's trying to do? He's trying to slow us down so that we don't reach out and impact this world for, for our Father God. He's trying to slow us down. And if he can beat us up in the meantime, he'll try to do that too, you know. Because he just hates us. He hates us. You know why? Because you look just like your dad. And he hates our father, you know. So it's going to come. So here it's going to come like this. He comes in a progression. He comes as a temptation first. So he's going to entice us in something that he thinks that we're weak on. And I've testified many times before that when I was lost in sin, the temptation for me was to steal. It was just something that I just, I don't know what happened there, but, you know, it was just, I would take things that weren't mine. So, what does he try to do? He remembers my weakness, right? So he tries to get me to steal now. But I got the victory over that. I have been tested so many times with that that it's not even an issue for me anymore. I have overcome that temptation. Doesn't bother me at all, you know. So I don't take what's not mine anymore, you know. Uh, but he's going to try. He'll try in things that he thinks that we're weak on, you know. So we have to be on guard on those areas that we know. We know what we're weak on. So we have to make sure that we don't put ourselves in a spot that he can use that kind of temptation against us, whatever it might be. So if we have a tendency to uh, gossip, which is a weakness of a lot of people, sometimes we'll know some information, we say a little bit more than we should. It should maybe somebody said something in confidence to us and we share it to somebody else, well that's gossip, you know. So maybe that's a weakness, you know. Well, if it is, guess what the devil's going to do? <laughs> He's going to tempt you in that area of weakness and try to get you talking about people. You know? <laughs> He's going to do it. And he'll tempt you to do it. So we have to recognize that it's a temptation that the enemy is trying to get us off track. You know, Because that's all he's got. And if we could stop it right there, wow, we save so much heartache and pain. When we say no to the temptation and we resist the devil, he has to turn tail and flee. He has no effect on us whatsoever. But sometimes, yeah, sometimes we are weak, you know. And sometimes we do fall for the temptation. And we do say things that we shouldn't have said. We knew we shouldn't have said it. And it gets out there. And it causes some harm, some hurt for other people. And we were the subject. We were the instigators of that. It was our words. We fell for the temptation. And we blurted those things out there. And now it's out there, and now we're in trouble. We're feeling bad. We're feeling convicted. We messed up, you know. And if we don't remedy that thing, it's going to get worse. It's going to start to fester and mold and turn bad real fast. The remedy has to be right away. We must confess our sins. Because we got into a place of sin now. It's past temptation. It is sin. And sin... Remember, when it's full grown, it turns into death. And we could feel a little bit of it because we feel bad. We know that, that something's working against us. We're feeling bad. That's a little taste of death that's working there. And uh, praise God for conviction. That He convicts us of our sins so that we can confess it and make things right. And as best as we can, whatever we say, we've got to try and make that right too as best as we can. But sometime when the cat gets out of the bag, it's too late on <laughs> You've already done the damage. It's going to take some time to repair sometimes some of the damage that we do. But the sin has to be dealt with immediately because it will turn into something way, way worse than you expected. So it needs to be handled. To... So it starts with a temptation. And it is not God that tempts us. He uses the instrument of Satan to do the, the testing, the temptation part. You know? But it's up to us to make the choice. We have to decide for ourselves. There is good and evil in this world. And it's going to constantly be in our face. And it's going to be up to us to make the decision whether we're going to choose to follow after our fleshly desires when the enticement comes from the enemy or are we going to stay with what God has said. 
Are we going to stay with His Word, His principles? We're going to be a tested pretty much on a daily basis. And I guarantee you, if you pass the test two or three times, it's not going to be an issue for you anymore. You will gain the victory over those kinds of temptations. And you won't fall for the devil's lies in that area anymore. But there will be other areas. We're being perfected. Jesus was perfect in all his ways. He walked in perfection. And that is the goal that God has for every one of us. So he's allowing the tempter to be here. He's allowing it for the purpose of testing us so that we can avoid the sin's destructive power. So passing the test is so critical for us. So we avoid that. Now, the next scripture is uh, James again. And this is... Let's see where is that here. James... Oh, it's chapter 1 still in verse 2. He said, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that your testing of your faith produces patience. It let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. Wow. There's a possibility for us to live at this level right here. It is a real, uh, a, a real goal that can be achieved. We can get to a place where the temptation no longer has any impact on us whatsoever. We can get there. But it's going to take some work. We're going to have to do our part. We're going to have to resist the devil. We're going to have to recognize temptation for what it is. And we're going to have to say no to sin and yes to God on, on a daily basis. And we will avoid these situations. That's a good life right there. That's what God intended for us. We can, we can have the life that, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of that is the fruit of resisting the temptation to fall into sin. This is our standard to live by. The devil's standard will take us down with bitterness, envy, strife, hatred, Bitterness, all those things are where that temptation will lead us to. So we can live here. That's where God wants us to be, living by that principle. Now I want to share this example because you would think that, uh, you know, in our maturity as Christians and maturity as people that we can resist and everything's going to be okay. Uh, but the enemy is sneaky. And look how sneaky he is. Here you have King David, right? He's in charge of Israel. He's been appointed by a prophet handpicked to be the, the king of Israel, you know. And David is very well known for having a heart after God. How many tests did he go through and passed, you know? He, a bunch of them, you know. And now he's, he's at a place where he's risen up in authority. Now he has the kingdom under his charge. And he's the man that God has appointed to this situation. And he seems to be doing a pretty good job even, you know. The kingdom is doing well. It's prospering. His, his enemies are being defeated. You know, things are going very well for, for Israel because the, the king is following the principles of God. And then one day, he decides to stay back from the war. Instead of being there at the war and commanding the troops, he sends his trusted soldiers out there, you know, to, to command the troops. And he stays home. And he's at home and doesn't have a whole lot to do, you know, and he's looking out the window from the roof of his uh, palace there, and he sees a woman taking a bath. The temptation has come. And here the king of Israel, the number one man of God, you know, the man after God's own heart, has been uh, tempted and enticed. And right here it says, uh, drawn away by his own desires. His own desire is causing him to stray away from the principles of God. The enticement is from the devil. And he has fallen for it. He has a weakness here. And he has fallen for it. And he has been enticed to not only look upon, but to lust over another woman. To the point that he starts to inquire about her. He asks his servants to go and find out who it is and all this and stuff. And he finds out who it is. And the first thing that they tell him is that... that that's the wife of so-and-so, one of your soldiers. They told him, he's the wife. She's the wife of your soldier. <laughs> and yet, 
the enticement was so great, his desires had been uh, totally out of whack now. You know, they're going in the wrong direction big time that he still inquires about her. And not only that, but the enticement gets to the point where he invites her up to his room. And they, of course, get involved sexually. And next thing you know, she's pregnant. And now, the guy's out fighting King David's war. And he's with his wife. It's a mess. It's a total mess. Started from just looking. Eyes watching. You know, it started from there. And it turned into this big old mess. Now he don't know what to do. So what does he do? He calls the guy from the war and brings him in. So he wants his, him to come home, be with his wife, and think that he got her pregnant. But he's a, he's a soldier that's committed to the cause. So he sleeps outside. He will not go in to his wife. He says, my, my soldiers, the ones I command, are out there fighting. I mean, they're sleeping on the floor, on the ground out there, you know. There's no way I can't, I can't do this, you know. So the king, David, he's saying, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, what I'll do, I'll get him drunk. So he gets him drunk and sends him home. But he sleeps on the porch again, you know. See how it goes? That little bit, all he did was his eyes saw something. It started there. And now he's getting a guy drunk. You know, it's worse than that. Worse than that. How many heard this story before? <laughs> well, he's, he, he sends him back out to the war. He calls in one of the chief generals and stuff and says, Hey, I want you to put him right up there where the battle is intense. I want you to put him out there. And uh, he doesn't stop at that. He tells him, put him out there and then withdraw from him and leave him vulnerable. He's executing the guy. King David, the man after God's own heart, is having a guy executed because he fell for his wife and impregnated her. You know? Wow, what a mess. It's not done yet. So he has the guy killed. The, 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 the wife mourns her husband. I guess they have like a two-week period of mourning. And then right after that, he takes her up to be his wife. My goodness. And here, you know, he thinks he's settled it, right? He's, he's done his thing, you know, everything's going to be good now. Enjoy my wife, we'll have a good future and all that stuff. Well, guess what? Here comes the prophet. And he tells him this story. Yeah, there was this one guy that, you know, he had a bunch of sheep and stuff, and one of his servants had one little sheep for the kids, you know. And uh, he invited uh, someone over, and he was going to feed him a big meal. But he went, instead of taking one of his own sheep, he went and took that little kid's sheep and killed that little sheep and had it butchered and he served that food to his guest. How terrible for that to do like that. And King David's all, oh, man, who is that person? I'll get him and I'll, man, we'll, we'll kill him and we'll give everything, we'll, we'll give that uh, little kid all these sheep and that stuff and make everything right. Who is that man, King David says? It is you. It is you. Oh, man. Now he's in it. He is convicted big time. Now he knows for sure that he didn't get away with it, but he's being held account accountable for it. The fruit of that is about to be poured out. The negative fruit is about to be poured out. And here he don't know what to do. He says, please pray for me. <laughs> please pray for that be not so, because this is what the, the prophet tells him. He says, yeah, God, you know, God knows what you did. He knows everything about it. And you're going to pay the price now. Sin brings death. That child that is coming is not going to survive. That child is going to die. Wow. And sure enough, you know, the child's born. The child gets sick. And here, King David, the only thing he knows to do is to pray. So he humbles himself before God. <clears throat> he lays out seven days fasting and just laid out before God on the, on the ground praying, asking for mercy. And, but the child died. Sin brings death. That was obvious death there. Yeah, but it's worse than that. 
You know, if King David asked for mercy, God forgave him because really he should have died. But God showed mercy to King David and allowed him to live. But the consequences of his actions followed him the rest of his life. Yeah, it was bad. God did show mercy on him. That lady, she got pregnant again, and King Solomon was born, you know. And, uh, but other things happened. His household fell apart. His kingdom fell apart, was divided. One of his sons raped one of his daughters. It was bad. Things got bad for King David. Yeah, he continued to rule and rule pretty good, you know, for the nation of Israel. But there was trouble after trouble after trouble. The consequences of sin. You know. And these consequences are real. You know. That is why it's so important for us to recognize sin brings death. The wages of sin is death. There is a price to pay. And we cannot afford it. We human beings, we cannot afford it. Because if we die, that's it. There's no coming back again and living as an animal or a reincarnation. No, it doesn't happen like that. We have one life. And we can't afford it what the wages of sin is, you know. It's death. Jesus paid that price for us because he knew we could not afford it. We have another opportunity in life because of what Jesus has done for us. We have an opportunity to go on continuing to live because we can ask for forgiveness of our sin and ask Jesus to be the payment for our sin. And he does. So we need to avoid that as much as possible. Avoid the temptation. It will lead us to places that we don't want to go. And it will take us further than we think even possible. So resist. Resist at every moment that you can or avoid the sin. And if you're watching this video today on YouTube or Facebook, uh, come to Jesus. He's the answer. You don't have to live a life that brings death and trouble and heartache all the time. God wants you to live good. And Jesus made the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Today is the day of salvation. He wants to make things better for you in this life. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your grace, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that you don't give up on us. You continue to remind us of sin's destructive power. And Father, we know it's not the enemy that's imposing that power, but it is our own selfish desires that bring this destruction to us, Father. Help us to recognize that, Father God, so that we don't fall into sin, that we don't go by the way of, of, uh, of, the, of the enemy that is uh, to kill, to steal, and to destroy, Father. Help us to just stay away from that. Recognize the temptation and help us to resist, Father God, steadfastly in our faith, Father, so we don't fall for the devil's tricks. And Father, we know that, that some that watch these videos, they they may see this for the first time and hear this message for the first time and wonder why my life is so bad. This is the answer, Father. It is sin working in people's lives that's causing all the problems. And you made a remedy through your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Help everybody to recognize that there is that remedy that they can make things right today by pledging their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, you're so good to us. Thank you, Father God, for putting up with us. Thank you for, even though we have passed the test from time to time, Father God, that we know that other tests will come and we can be victorious there too, Father. We do not have to fight for, fall for the schemes of the wicked one, Father, but we can continue to live by your standard and by your principles and we'll be the better for it. We love you, Lord. We thank you for never leaving us and forsaking us. We continue to pledge our lives to your service. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. We are dismissed. <laughs>